EU foreign ministers arrived in Brussels for tough talks on controversial issues. This time, to no one's surprise, most of the talking was again about Europe's economic recovery plan. And again, there was no decision. If we fail to find the agreement this week, then the credibility of uh, everybody in that would put, be put into the questions. Success will be a success of entire 27 just as a failure. This comes amid concerns that the G20 will be a failure due to disagreements between the United States and the European Union. The problem is, as experts say, the US is pushing for more stimulus, while the EU claims the focus should be on regulation. And the two sides will have to explain their positions. We have to explain the Americans that we are doing enough on the stimuli, uh, stimuli part. Uh, we are also in a different situation. The idea that uh, the European stimuli would uh, uh, grow twice or three times, I think, uh, is not uh, very realistic. After the economy, the ministers talked about the Middle East over lunch. It was hard to swallow rising concerns that Israel may not mean its commitments to a two-state solution. It's all a matter of principles and a matter of what we indeed want. And we always have said we, stay, we stand for a two-state solution. Palestinian leaders say they will not negotiate with the Israeli government after the newly elected prime minister formed a coalition with the ultra-right, which is against the creation of a Palestinian state. But experts say Netanyahu simply did not have any other choices. Netanyahu had to come up with a coalition government within a few days because that was the time frame that he had for his own mandate. And the only coalition he was capable to assemble was the one with the secular far right and with the orthodox far right. But that's far from the only obstacle to peace in the Middle East. Experts say Palestinian leaders are not united themselves in the sense that there is no such thing as a Palestinian government right now. Foreign ministers also discussed other foreign policy issues. They called for immediate ceasefire in Sri Lanka, urged Sudan's government to reconsider the expulsion of NGOs and vowed to continue evaluating the human rights situation in Belarus. The most pressing issue for the European Union before the G20 meeting in London remains the economic crisis. Failure to come up with a coordinated approach may compromise the success of the event and lead to a political and economic deadlock. Anna Moya, Press TV, Brussels.